Hello dear trust friends and welcome to our new video. In that video I will present game uh, Vasilis Mislov won uh, in 1946 with black pieces against Igor Bondarevsky. Two titans of uh, 40s of last century and you'll see young Smyslov uh, so convincingly led game and uh, won in a perfect style. Uh, Roy Lopez was the chosen opening and after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop moves back, knight f6, castling and bishop e7. And now, with the spending time to play bishop a4, now white plays bishop c6. I think that uh, cannot be good advice, but white wanted to use the fact uh, after d takes c6, black must spend time to protect pawn e5. If I wanted to play this, uh, d3 would be better choice because he needs a rook on f1, later he would be able to open f file with f4. Rook e1 is uh, not so common move, black played knight d7 and after d4 we achieve uh, first key position in our game. Uh, White is practically pawn up because black has a uh, double pawn on the queen side and black cannot easily create past pawn on the queen side. But uh, as you can see, that, that defect of pawn structure can be convincingly compensated with powerful black bishop pair. <coughs> and uh, with his next move, black starts activating his bishops, knight c5. Black pretends to set knight on ultra block, ultra important blocking spot e6. Maybe it is not looking so blocking, but you will see soon his point. Also, he attacks the queen. He is ready to get tempo with knight e6. And why decided in that moment uh, to take on d8? Because black is practically forced to take with bishop. White with the bishop taking with rook will. Uh, taking with uh, rook will cost black a pawn c7. So black takes with the bishop, knight c3, and now we can see black played amazing move f5. So why is that amazing move? First of all, let's uh, remind that black has bishop pair, and in such situation, if you have bishop pair against pair of knights or against bishop and knight, you should insist in opening the position. Uh, Black does not have good spot for his bishop c8 because he predicted to put knight on e6 and uh, instead of playing b6 c5 which can be uh, so long uh, long term maneuvering uh, so uh, Black directly decided to open position with f5. Also Black Rook now acts as submarine against that bishop on f4 and White played, I think, probably automatically e5, which is horrible, horrible positional mistake. So why it's horrible positional mistake to get past pawn to block the position if you have knight against opponent bishop? You'll see very soon. The point e5 is terrible positional mistake. Uh, the point is that pawn restricts three white pieces and... Uh, also, the point is that pawn on e5 would be separated from white rest of queen side pawns. So, if that is a mistake, what should be played? Well, there is uh, given some nice variation could lead to some balanced or let's say equality. After bishop g5, white would be able to exchange the bishop. And after that, that variation is shown as potentially equal. Well, after bishop g4, rook e3 leads to draw, black can just take that knight and uh, position is equal. Both sides will have some crashing, uh, crashed, crashed uh, majorities and won't be able to create past pawn. So, instead of that, white allowed terrible positional mistake, e5, and you will see. Uh, the most important is to have harmony, harmony in your army, and after e5, White will lack exactly this. Now, if it is white turn, he will play bishop g5 with huge, huge advantage, having passed pawn and better knight against opponent bishop. 
but it is black's move and he plays knight e6 and that is one of the best knights you can see in in uh, chess uh, in chess publications and in chess bases that is extremely amazing knight and uh, that knight does not only blocks the pawn also by blocking that pawn knight paralyzes pieces which are protected by uh, paralyzes pieces which are protecting that pawn so as you can see that knight also will put pressure on white pawn f4 if white uh, manages somehow to play f4 but now the most precise move black could play is g5 absolutely brilliant and amazing play by smithsville reason number one to play this is to prevent white f4 in some good moment but there is also even more important reason not to play this uh, having white uh, right to move uh, he will definitely go for knight e2 and next move will be for sure knight d4 or knight f4 by playing like this white will be able to eliminate black uh, blockader so always try to eliminate opponent knight blocking your passed pawn by g5 black prevents that because after knight e2 which happened in the game black would be able to play c5 white knights cannot use squares d4 and f4 and thus black knight is perfectly safe on e6 safe on light spot white has dark square bishop and as you can see since that moment black is absolutely dominant on the board pawn e5 is rather weak uh, than dangerous one and uh, you will see convincingly how black will somehow surround surrounding uh, uh, it uh, squeezing white position more and more advancing pawns on the flanks uh, side having bishop pair should open the position that's postulate number one postulate number two can be side having bishop pair against knight pair or against bishop knight should gain space black did it by playing c5 and g5 black will do it again and again as you will see and third important principle lot or postulate for side having bishop pair advantage is that uh, uh, if you have bishop pair advantage against opponent bishop and knight mostly you should put your pawns on opponent bishop color on opponent bishop color and that's exactly black did by setting pawns on c5 and g5 now you can see white has knight on light squares bishop on dark squares and all white pieces are paralyzed some squares like c4 uh, like d4 f4 h4 e5 b4 g5 all that squares are taken and white minor pieces are perfectly restricted here white try with bishop c3 but now black is consistent b5 white to hesitate so b b5 bishop goes to b7 knight stays on e6 forever b3 bishop b7 now white retreats uh, moving uh, moving knight there now of course black can take on f3 to harm pawn structure but white to go for this as we can see white idea of playing knight g3 can be knight h5 knight f6 but that knight so deep in opponent's territory would be not dangerous at all the most important position for knight is a black dominating spot on e6 white knight on f3 works nothing white knight on g3 can be transferred on f6 but remember knight should be placed in front of opponent pawn not behind deeply in opponent's territory black play g4 this knight must go back bishop e7 with idea to occupy d file knight h5 king f7 all that is very normal and unfortunately for white he cannot easily install knight on f4 if white plays g3 there will be for sure uh bishop g5 i think and later black will dominate even on d5 so knight f1 was happened in that position king g6 excellent forcing white to decide what to do with knight and after knight f6 now knight won't be able again to occupy the square f4 now black just goes for rook ad8 rook day d1 opening uh, with uh, opposing to open it on the file and now black just eliminates major pieces 
rook d8 and knight e3. White once again allowed mistake, knight e3 is not a good move, but here already white is uh, strategically uh, just lost, he is completely outplayed. Uh, black has idea even of taking knight f6, playing knight d4 after that and take pawn on f6 for free. It's just one of possibilities, of course, another and more danger is ability to play bishop e4 in some good moment. So, zero harmony in white camp, complete uh, uh, inability to organize anything. White tried with knight e3 to protect c2 in advance, but powerful Smyslov strike uh, just crushes all white plans. f4. Now taking the pawn would lead to losing that knight after h5, so knight must retreat, and of course, bishop f6. The fourth principle, the fourth postulate of having bishop pair uh, against opponent bishop and knight is ability to exchange easily one of bishops for opponent bishop or opponent knight, with idea to transfer position uh, to some uh, other position you can easier uh, used to realize the, the, the huge positional advantage. Now, black eliminates controller of square e4 and after this, of course, bishop e4. Pawn c2 will fall, bishop b2, but very, very fine move again. Uh, white decided, uh, black decided not to take because knight can escape. So knight c3, white, black just played b4 here f3 and bishop c2 attacking the knight, knight f2, normally gf, gf, and bishop b1. Knight e4, white tries to organize something, but as you can see, black knight dominates controlling everything. Looks like black bishop may face problems after knight d2, but that's an illusion. After simple a5, black can play either a4 or c4 easily. Uh, uh, rescuing that bishop. King f2, but the simplest is knight d4, and as you can see, dear chess friends, Smyslov perfectly calculating anything. Uh, everything was precisely calculated by Smyslov, yes. Bishop d4, c takes, king e2, king f6, king d3, king e5. Now king c4 loses after a4. So many pawns uh, White is so many pawns uh, behind and uh, so many pawns down. Yeah, king c2. The plan is maybe to play king b2, but again, a4, bishop escapes. After this, just c5, a5, once again, perfectly calculated by Smith of c4, and after a6, d3. Direct play, black is just faster. Uh, his next move is c3 with bishop d5. If white plays this, just uh, black wins because there will be uh, ability for black to win the game. There is not draw with perpetual, uh, just soon mating with b3, king b2, this, and after that, queen will be lost. So after d3, black is evidently faster and white exactly in that moment decided to resign the game. What I want to say is to remind you about f5 amazing move. The fastest way to uh, activate black pieces to accelerate the development and uh, simply a conventional move e5 is just a terrible mistake. So white blocks the position <coughs> having uh, knight against the bishop, but the point is black knight is dominating on the e6, white cannot find even one single outpost for his knights, and as you can see, even black will bishop now, at the moment, passive will uh, work perfectly after a few moves. Just see black, bishop, black bishops in that moment. So, brutal domination on both flanks, he who controls center better can play on both wings, and as you can see, black used that, that uh, principle uh, to determine his approach of advancing on both sides. 
Dear chess friends, I hope you enjoyed that video. And uh, once again, you could see that uh, simply analyzing classic games does not have an alternative because, you know, in 40s and 50s of last century, uh, games were based on logic and the normal and common chess postulates, not on uh, decisions made by engines and computers. So I wish you to implement principles you, I hope, learn from that game in your future career. And I hope also you will enjoy in our next videos. See you soon. Bye bye.